Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Alrighty, the funny thing is, I just did this video like a week ago before they uh, decided they were gonna post the updates that were uh, created for the uh, Normandy map. So, kinda weird. Uh, not entirely a bad thing though. Uh, so I posted the video today of my pre-free visual update Normandy map um, video. That was basically the overview of what it offered. And uh, I was way more critical on it because uh, before this free visual update, it really looked kind of stinky. You know, it wasn't the best map. And um, if you look at this background wallpaper, this is very representational of what it was before the update. They didn't change the wallpaper yet, and they probably should because it goes to show how like hand-drawn and kind of crappy it looks uh, before the update. The trees were more of a, a lighter green color than what they are now. So, let's get right into it. So, if you have the DCS Normandy 1944 map, let's go to Instant Action. I'm going to go through what all missions you would get with the Normandy map if you had specific modules. So if you have the A-10C, you've got the following missions. Air-to-air, -air, CAS, weapons practice, landing, free flight, takeoff. And uh, let's do the free flight real quick because two things happened this week. They updated the Normandy map nicely and they also updated the A-10C uh, 3D graphics, 3D cockpit graphics. So, it's a much better looking A-10 on the inside. So yeah, I was pretty critical of it because there was a lot of things that just didn't look right to me. But I think changing the textures in the way they did has made a, a reasonable improvement. I also posted the old video because that way you could uh, look at both and uh, see the differences for yourself. Some things aren't as apparent, other things are. So as you can see the A-10 cockpit looks fantastic finally and it is very 3D. And it looks more on par with everything that we have going on in DCS now if you had purchased a module recently. So right away the trees look a hundred percent better and they changed the uh, texture palette I believe as well. Uh, I think some of the tiles down below actually have more depth to them. It doesn't look like a, uh, a quilt that uh, was made like in craft class for senior citizens or something you know. It looked pretty bad before I thought. Now, it, it's almost like there's better contrast, too. Bridge textures were updated as well, they were saying. Some of the stuff stayed the same. The, there are some, like, just drab colors, you know, like some of those buildings over there. Some of that stuff looks the same, while other things look a little more high-res. I think the industrial textures have gotten an improvement in some areas. Like the Harbor Strike mission for sure for the Vigan. Those buildings definitely need an update though. I hope they're going to do something about those. Those just look ugh. So that is the A-10. So, if you own the Vigan, you've got three missions. Now, keep in mind, this Harbor Strike mission, if you own the Vigan and you own the Normandy map, but you don't own the World War II assets package, when you click this, you're going to get an error telling you that, hey, by the way, you don't own the World War II assets pack. Which is kind of a bummer. I don't know why they would give you the mission or give you access to the mission at all if you didn't already own the World War II assets pack, right? 
and uh, this is another cockpit that they said did some minor tweaks to graphically this week and uh, I think they did something with the afterburner visuals on this as well looks really good and they also gave everybody uh, an extra free campaign for the Vigan uh, a follow-up to the Mjolnir response something thunder and uh, heat blur had also announced that they're going to be giving they bought the rights to the red flag campaign that you had to purchase for the Vigan that's uh, over the Nevada map and that they're going to give that campaign away for free to all owners of the Vigan as well and even in the store it says buy but there's no price and you can click it and it gives you an error that says there's no price so I think they're preparing that is what it comes down to this area up ahead looks considerably better to me let's drop some bombs on these guys and then I'll go up to altitude a little bit and we'll look down and you'll see what I'm talking about boom 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 see the trees they're like darker now there's more depth to them I think the texture details look a little better too nice okay Harrier nothing F-16C this is the free flight of June 6, 1944. This is the, hey, we're going to send you back in time, like the final countdown. And uh, it's really just a mission to let you fly around and, and look at what's going on in the battle below. Pretty cool. It's different. Not really much to do except for fly, but... No, tell me I didn't crash loading this. Nope, just loading. This one has a lot going on down below. It's funny, no matter how fast your hard drive's going, it still takes a couple minutes or a minute almost to, to load some stuff in DCS. And I'm running off of a terabyte SSD. Alrighty. Now one of the things they said is that they improved the uh, coastlines as well. I'm going to turn those labels off because nobody likes those. So there's definitely some stuff going on over here. I think the terrain textures of the sand and stuff look nicer too. There's actually some depth to them. I don't have water turned up all the way either. I'm actually running this visually with the settings that I use for VR for performance. So I have absolutely no anti-aliasing on at all either. Now the wall texture I think looks nicer as well. Kind of hard to see in the right light. That's one thing about DCS. Uh, it's really nice when the lighting is just right and then other times you're just like man where's the light at really looking forward to seeing what they can do with this uh, going to Vulcan and changing the uh, uh, visual uh, graphics engine side of things here lots of cool World War II stuff in there and I think this is another one of those missions that won't work without the World War II assets pack I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, those textures look a lot nicer right there, too. And the trees, they don't look like those ugly lime green sprites that they did before. You know, they look like sticks until you came up on them. They also mentioned that they added a variety of new airfields. Look, look at the ships off in the distance there. But they mentioned, uh, I want to say seven new airfields were added 
for the Normandy map. Look, there's some bombing going on over there, or artillery. I don't know what they're doing. Definitely some stuff going off, though. This is a really good... Now that they fixed the trees, this would be a really good map for, like, helicopter operations and stuff. Look at that, some bombed out fuel containers it looks like they also changed the afterburn effect this week it's thinner and longer now which is really cool on the F-16 it's been a great week for DCS world guys it really has man they've done some really cool shit And at altitude, everything appears to look nice up here. I'll pull this way. I'll do like a 9G turn. <laughs> 8.9. Want to cruise up this waterway for a second. Alrighty, I don't want to waste too much time in the F-16. So if you own the F-5, you get the pretty standard three dogfight, ground attack, intercept, free flight, takeoff, and cold start missions. For the Tomcat, you still get the three missions that they only give you. The similar air combat, carrier recovery, case one and case three. F-18, the low altitude recon mission. This is a tough one. And uh, I did this before. I made a video on it in VR. And uh, this is a hard mission. You've got to basically get in there and uh, avoid all the air defense systems to get in there and I believe take some photos of some stuff and then make your way back to the carrier. Um, I think I made it about three quarters through this mission before getting killed by a flanker, of all things. <coughs> Excuse me. It wasn't the uh, air defenses that got me. It was a, a plane, of all things. Kind of bummer. But it was really fun and really thrilling because you're just cruising as low as you can possibly go, trying to stay out of the, uh, the, the, the way of being detected by all defensive systems that are here. Alrighty. Let's give her some throttle. And off we go. Up, up, and away. Waypoint. Auto and oh, wrong way flaps. Let's get down and start skimming that water. Because things are going to start going off pretty soon. Pretty weird how different it looks from the cockpit to external. I think it's because of the addition of whatever the uh oh missile incoming got me. Um, <laughs> this is a fun mission because of the uh, canopy having to go through the canopy. So that was quick. There's a nice view of the map at altitude. So 
So again, that is a challenging mission. We just got vaped. Flaming Cliffs. We should have a variety of missions. Let's do the free flight. Oh, I should have did the free flight at night. Or is, is this the night one? Because I did that in the last video. Let's see. Yes, it is. Let's see how much better or worse this looks now. And you know what? Honestly, it looks about the same. DCS is not so great at nighttime visuals. So I would have to say that uh, this looks the same as it did before. Very nice when you look at it from this angle across the sea. It's actually a very nice image right there. But when you turn around and look at what's down below or ahead of you, it's kind of the same. Like I said, DCS just isn't good at nighttime stuff. It's too bad they aren't. So again, they're pretty generous with all the missions when it comes to the Flaming Cliff stuff. But that's every map. If you go to any map, you know, Nevada. Actually, the default map is the one they give you the least for when it comes to Flaming Cliffs. KA-50. Free flight. This is probably where it'll look the best, I would say. Loading, loading, loading. Alrighty. Again, the trees look really nice now, I think, compared to what they did. The palette is way better. Um, let's get down a little lower. And you can really see the textures now. Seem to be a reasonable improvement. The trees just don't look like sticks like they did before until you got up on them, which is nice. Yeah, this looks more like a, a helicopter environment. Got some trees I could just bob down to below and then pop up from. Oh, if I had an Apache. <laughs> well, you can do the same thing in this, I suppose, but it doesn't feel as thrilling to me. Really wish we had an Apache. It's a bummer that we don't. Or even a Cobra. Like, I don't know how we've made it this long in DCS. Why don't we have a Cobra or an Apache? Uh, I'm really glad that we're getting the Kiowa, but it's still not a Cobra or an Apache. The two most iconic attack helicopters we still don't have in DCS world. Come on, guys. Somebody's got to do this. Yeah, this looks rather nice. I'm digging it. Again, I think those textures of those houses could look a little better, but... Alrighty, and that is down below. And then, let's see, Mirage has a number of missions. Pretty cool stuff. They've got a lot of missions. MiG-21, nothing. MI-8, nothing. P-51D. I'm really disappointed they only give you... Like, you get more in the default map than they give you in the Normandy map. Really, guys? But I did just get the Mustang the other day, and I have to admit, I'm really enjoying this more than the Spitfire. And I think it's because it seems to me that it flies nicer, or maybe I'm able to fly this better than I am the Spitfire. That's probably what it is, but uh, yeah, and I was able to, to shoot down a couple things in it. I've done that in the Spitfire from time to time, too, but I'm just not that good at prop planes, man. 
years ago I was when we had like Microsoft Combat Flight Simulator and Jane's World War II fighters I was considerably better at this stuff but you know 15 20 years have went by since then and I'm older my reflexes are worse I would suppose but this is what it's made for you know these are the planes you want to be flying on this map and looking at it now I think it really fits you know it's a really fitting uh, map for the war warbirds for sure my only complaint still is you could spend seventy five dollars to buy on sale even a single World War II warbird for DCS the Normandy map um, in the World War II assets package and then an additional campaign and all you have is one plane and <coughs> excuse me and a handful of content so like right now IL-2 is on sale again and uh, you can get Battle of Stalingrad the non-deluxe version without the two extra planes which still gives you eight planes and a whole ton of content for twelve bucks it's and you know IL-2 and VR actually performs way better than DCS does so but in their defense their warbirds in DCS are way more realistic they're modeled more realistically they have the fully clickable cockpits I have to get a better lighting angle here to show you the cockpit better there we go the lights hitting us a little better now so and this is the Mustang the P-51D and, and here's an example of how realistic things are in the in the uh, Mustang or in the DCS Warbirds nice handle and it is 3d because look I could just kinda come around and look at that but I did this by accident yesterday so I'm gonna bring my throttle back I did this the other day and I literally like just the, the the prop stopped in dead air you know I don't know why it's not doing it now yeah I did something the other day where I jacked it up I literally just pulled back the throttle to check it out and the prop stopped in dead air and I killed the engine so anyways I'm glad that didn't happen again but stuff like the Spitfire too, man, like that thing is just, man, it's like rubbing your belly and patting your head at the same time to make that thing taxi in a straight line down a runway, you know. You, you've got to taxi it around to the runway and then take off in it. And it's just, it's a bear, man. Uh, I just can't get it. I've done it once, but it was so frustrating and it took me so long and took me so many tries that I was like, man, F this. So now that I have the Mustang, I feel like I'm going to do this more. But in their defense, I will say this. The Mustang actually does come with a campaign where... But it takes place on the Caucasus map, which is what it is. So if you go to the Spitfire, it came with absolutely no uh, campaigns. And I had to buy these but both of the campaigns that you can buy in their defense do take place on the Normandy map so that's kinda cool but they also require the World War II assets pack both of them I believe so you still gotta pay that extra fifteen dollars just for the objects they've created to make things more period you know because they include the the, the period vehicles the the little soldiers walking around on the ground the period buildings all that stuff doesn't come with the Normandy map which is like really guys like that should be part of it uh, I just don't know who in the right mind would ever pay like you know fifty dollars for this when it's not on sale so there's our little period people there's our little period objects and uh, the trees look way better though for sure I think the texture looks a little bit more improved too 
I could be wrong on this. You gotta look at the other video. Let's jump into some of the other planes that are already in the air in this campaign. But overall, I think they, they changed around some of the tiles and added some more of these yellow ones and darker ones into it to give it more variation. Uh, before, it looked pretty bland to me. Now I'm seeing it going, hey, this actually looks pretty nice. And again, for the World War II stuff, I think it's a nice map now. Uh, I still think Nevada and Persian Golf are better for the majority of the stuff I do with the uh, modern stuff and the uh, lo locations that they've chosen are nicer for the modern stuff but for World War II this is a fitting map at this point and on sale in their defense it is only twenty two dollars and something so pretty cool yeah so I'm, all my progress will be lost I know I haven't even flown these because I can't get the thing in the air it's really a pain in the ass okay SA-342, these are campaigns. Go back to instant action. We were at the P-51. SA-342, none. Spitfire, you do get a couple of missions. I'm going to do this dogfight one again and get shot out of the sky, as I usually do, because that's what I'm good at in a prop plane. You would think after having this map loaded so many times that it would just load faster. Although I'll admit, I am running SATA, SATA 3 SSDs. I'm not using NVMe uh, S, uh, SSD drives. I could. My motherboard supports it. And maybe maybe I'll do that after the holidays, you know, if I get any kind of decent income tax back this year. Being a single parent, and the kids are older now, I'm not looking forward to not getting really anything back. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh-oh. There I go, almost going into that spin. This thing's a little unforgiving. Oh, he's going to try to get my boy. The hard time I have is getting this lead just right. Oh, come on, that should be a good shot right there. There we go. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to turn around and his buddy's going to be right behind me. If he isn't already. Oh, close. He really was close to being behind me. Thankfully, he's going for the other guy. So I may be able to get a firing solution. Oh, almost. That was quick. So anyways, that's the Spitfire over the uh, Normandy terrain. SU-25T, they give you the you know normal six missions, a little bit of everything. T-51D, two missions. And again, what the hell are you going to do in it anyway? Because it's only a uh, trainer plane. So free flight and takeoff. UH-1H, nothing. So that pretty much concludes it. Again, they've added like seven airfields. They've changed the textures of a variety of the objects throughout the game. Um, does every place look different? No. Uh, but I think overall it was a nice free improvement from the guys at uh, UGRA or UGRA Media. Uh, so thanks a lot, guys. It was nice that you improved this because it finally looks like it's something that should be in DCS world, and it's on par, I think, with uh, most of the other details you would find in some of the other maps. So uh, that's it, man. That's the Normandy 1944 map. As always, thanks for watching. Feel free to hit that like button. Please subscribe to the channel. And until next time.